conflict can hold you back from giving your best or doing your best. And it could even make you appear to be a little bit of a different personality than maybe you typically are or what your coworkers are used to seeing. There are prices we pay when we don't manage conflict. And I wanna share with you some of them. There's many prices, but here are a few that I want you to think about. So if we don't manage conflict appropriately, it can lead to broken relationships, right? Um, I know it's happened during my career, not because I wanted that to happen, but when someone else isn't willing to work through a conflict, well, then that's what happens. The relationship is broken. Obviously, stress. It's just very stressful when we're going through our work day and we have different views and different opinions of how something should be done, or if someone is being maybe a perceived difficult person. It affects your opportunities for promotion. If you're being viewed by management, which if you're in the office, you are being viewed, but also I will also say you're being viewed when you're at home too. You may not realize it, but you're being viewed if your managers are reading your emails, if they're hearing about things through other people. So we're still being viewed. And if they see that an employee can't manage conflict appropriately, they're not gonna wanna give them other opportunities, leadership opportunities. Um, they're not gonna wanna promote those people or they're not going to want to assign some staff to you. Another price we pay, and it's a big one, it affects your reputation and your brand. You become known as the difficult person. Okay, and I don't think any of us want to be labeled as the difficult person. Another price is it slows down a project. And when we slow down a project, then frustration sets in, then we have stress, uh, then maybe again the people who assigned us the project aren't happy with us, and we have this domino effect or snowball effect. So there are a lot of prices we pay when we don't manage conflict. On the other side of that, there are many benefits when we know how to manage conflict or a term I heard years ago is to think about cooperative conflict. Now that was kind of strange to me because they sound opposite, cooperative and conflict right? How does that work? Well, the person who came up with that idea was saying that when we cooperate with each other to figure out the conflict, we create a win-win. And I like that idea. Again, it wasn't the idea of me against you, or I have to win and you have to lose. It's just there's something that's creating disagreement. Let's figure this out together. So here are the benefits. We come up with new ideas. I know when I've been with others who, again, maybe we're working on something new or we're trying to recalibrate something here, um, one of our products or one of our services, and someone else is bringing in different views and opinions. Maybe at first I'm thinking, no, I don't like that idea. But if I open my mind, then we do create new uh, products and services. So it's good. We have a better outcome, believe it or not. And I'm gonna share with you something in a moment that I think will make you stop and think, okay? It increases our confidence. When I learn how to manage conflict, when I have to challenge myself with my communication skills, you know, how do I talk to this person? How do I frame things? What words should I be using? So I diminish the conflict. 
I feel really good when I've been able to accomplish that. You get resolution to the problem, right? And you develop essential skills. So that is under where I talked about increased confidence. But you will develop these certain essential skills, which I will share with you in another video in this course. I was really fortunate to work with Walt Disney World a few years ago, and it was the best experience um, that I've ever, ever had. And I was there to help develop and upskill their executive and administrative assistants. And I was there several times, six times within six months, and I would be there for several days. And what happened is before I went in to do that work, one of my friends gave me a book called How to Be Like Walt. It's about that thick. I love, 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 love that book. And I would encourage you to read it wherever you are in your work life. It doesn't matter what profession you're in. It doesn't matter what career you're in, what job you do. It's a fascinating story, but there's lessons in every chapter. And I love this one idea that I read. It was so interesting to me. It says when Walt Disney assembled a creative team, he would always seek a balance of contrasting personalities. A few frenetic, high energy types, one or two quiet, reflective types, some natural leaders, some followers. He would purposely pair two animators of highly contrasting styles and personalities on the theory that something unexpected would emerge from a combination of polar opposites. And he was rarely disappointed. Wow, that was fascinating to me. He purposely put people together who were conflicting, right? And that's not easy, you know, if you are those two people, to be able to work through it. But we definitely can have some amazing outcomes.